Hey, so I have wanted to do a video of the Ring of Fire and Pony matchups for a while now. And because I've played in a lot of these games, I thought I could provide some unique insight into what these teams do so well. And uh, because I don't want to give too much information away in this video, I just wanted to outline some things that I notice Pony does very well. And so I will mostly be focusing on our game against them at the World Championships where Pony beat us 15-12. So when I watch this game back, the thing that sticks out the most to me is how well Pony poaches on defense. They are constantly disrupting throwing lanes with well-timed poaches that sort of take our throwers out of their rhythm. Here you can watch some of these really well-timed poaches by maybe the best poacher in the world in Ben Katz. And right away in the first point of the game, I catch the first underneath pass and you can see Katz here rushes over to disrupt my throwing lane, which causes my cutter, who's Terrence, to stop cutting aggressively. And I also notice the poach and decide to dump the disc quickly to switch the field. Although this poach does let off an easy dump, it also takes away our ability to isolate our cutters in space and put together a good string of cuts. These continuous poaches can sort of disrupt offensive flow and does a really good job of taking the offense out of their rhythm. And as this point continues and we reach the end zone, you can see Katz continues to display some really well-timed poaches. Watch when this disc swings back from the trap sideline, back to the middle of the field. This is usually a moment when the offense has a really big advantage and the front of the stack can get some leverage and create some space. Ryan does make a move here to the front cone to score, but Katz again steps in the way right at the right time and disrupts the throwing lane. And here in our next offensive possession, Pony uses the offside handler defender to sneak into the middle of the field and try to disrupt some throwing windows. On the flat side of the field, usually the most common place to attack is upfield and through the middle, and defenses will sort of trust that the mark will take away anything down the line and encourage throws to that middle of the field. And again, this poacher leaves a free dump back to the middle, but they have disrupted the offensive flow successfully and caused our offense to switch the field and take another look. And here in this example, similar to the first point, notice how this defensive player will rush immediately to the line of scrimmage as soon as the disc is thrown to disrupt any further downfield passes and force the offense to dump the disc once again. AD, who is the thrower, notices these lane poaches and decides to cut deep away from that defender, and he ends up wide open, but no one is able to see him. And here in this clip, we're going to see an example of Cat sort of getting burned on an attempted poach. So right here, Gooch is set up at a 45 degree angle behind the dump, and Katz is guarding the secondary handler right here and watches to see what space Gooch is going to cut into. And as soon as Gooch makes his move upfield, Katz looks to jump that route. Katz is playing really heads up and watching both the cutter and the thrower to see what route he can jump. Unfortunately for Katz, JR plays really good tight defense on Matt, and Henry doesn't really consider making that throw. Instead, Henry's going to hit me on an around up field right here, and Saul, who was the original player being guarded by Katz, smartly takes advantage of him leaving and quickly moves upfield and gets an easy continue for me for a big yardage gain. And if you watch this entire game, you'll see a similar pattern happen throughout the entire game where Pony is really trying to clog throwing lanes and disrupt that offensive rhythm. Here, you'll notice that Chris Kotcher starts out by giving sort of the illusion that he's tight on that primary reset before then jumping into the lane and clogging that lane once again. I'm the isolated cutter looking to gain separation, and I do a good job on my cut and get separation deep, but the handler is forced to swing the disc because Chris Kotcher clogged that lane at the last second. Ryan Osgar getting up. And Pony comes really close on several other poaches throughout this game, 
And it's because they're so incredibly aware of throwing lanes and are constantly keeping their head on a swivel to sort of watch the thrower's eyes as well as what lanes cutters are cutting into. And here are two more examples of both Grant Lindsley and Ben Katz sort of reading the play and coming really close to getting the D and again, applying that constant pressure and those tighter throwing windows. With Pony poaching as many lanes as they do, the downfield defense can get caught depending on them sometimes a little bit too much. Here, Sam Little is a little late poaching the lane of the thrower, and Saul is able to hit an open deep shot to Alex Davis. And this is a result of the downfield defense forcing the cutters out and depending on those lane poaches. And if that lane poach doesn't come, an open D shot can open up. And this is sort of a really good example of showing how small the margin for error is in these games, because Sam probably misses this poach by about six inches, but that's just enough space for Saul to be able to release this throw and successfully execute a deep shot. At this level, teams are constantly adapting their strategies against these top teams that they're facing. And I'm personally looking forward to working with Ring this season to see what adjustments we can make to take better advantage of Pony's strengths and weaknesses. And there's a pretty good chance that we'll have to meet again somewhere down the line at Nationals, and I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks for watching.